Hey, how's it going guys? This is Zerai here. So, I wanted to share my full, honest review on Stellar Blade. I have finally finished the game, I have taken my time, I was going for the Platinum Trophy, this is why it took me a lot longer than I have anticipated. Nevertheless, I am very, very glad the way that I picked up this game and I was right in terms of being, well, relatively hyped for this game. Since a lot of times whenever you're hyped or excited, for a lot of... <laughs> Unfortunately, they just end up being, well, in some cases, uh, underperformed or underappreciated even, and sometimes just a disappointment. Well, yeah, this game ended up being way better than I have anticipated. But of course, it doesn't mean that it's all rainbows and roses and stuff like that. It actually has some faults as well. But there are some good, there are of course some bad. Now, I want to get into the individual points regarding the good, the bad, and, you know, just relatively my thoughts regarding of Stellar Play. So let's get in. First, I want to mention the good. I actually do think that Souls-like experience being that this game is, even though it's a lot, a lot more forgiven, uh, forgiving than, you know, a lot of people would anticipate, since a lot of times when you die, you lose some sort of a, uh, maybe currency, or you lose something at the process of dying. In this game, not so much. In fact, you have a lot of ways of making sure you do not die. <laughs> Even on the more difficult uh, you know, options of playing this game, I don't want to say it's relatively hard or even challenging, but there are moments that, okay, that could be like, okay, you have to kind of pay attention what you're doing. And yet, Souls-like experiences is that, because you'll have to pay attention, you can just mash buttons and be hopeful for about it. But in this game, you kind of can, it really depends how you want to play this game though. But nevertheless, this game is a lot more forgiven and also it's a lot more friendlier for the people to experience what kind of Souls-like experiences that you would expect to see, right, in these sorts of titles. Very of gameplay and amounts of it very much is appreciated, I really really like it, especially in terms of how you progress through and unlock, right, unlock the skill trees, unlock the abilities and things that you capable of utilizing to your own advantage. Now, nevertheless, there are some faults as well, especially I'm talking about the story. I don't think particularly that the story is well done, especially due to having a main character, Eve herself, not so interesting as a person. She's very stoic, right? She's very kind of emotionless, but even though she does tend to show a lot of her emotions, uh, yet, I want to say that I don't really like her in terms of her character. But it's a different story when we're talking about how she looks though, because she's absolutely dead drop gorgeous. And yeah, that's definitely is a positive. I love the way you can customize Eve and to full extent almost having like about nearing somewhere, what is it, 40 outfits basically, and is genuinely is incredible. On top of that, new game plus mode also introduces and there's a variant of these outfits that you already have let's say collected since you actually need to collect I think it was 30 outfits for a trophy and yet after when you access the new game plus you can collect the same outfits again but they're gonna have different color variants so you can see how they would look like and you can actually wear them while also during the cutscenes you see how gorgeous Eve looks and of course during the combat included so of course, like I mentioned, there's a positive, there's a negative. Negative next, it is that the side missions or side quests are not necessarily or exactly interesting, unfortunately. There are a lot of characters that are introduced within this game, but again, these characters are very, very samey, I'm serious. Like, they're not that interesting. And especially that they just stay in their own spot, mind their own business, and just they're dolls, you know, they're AI, they NPCs, they do nothing, they have no story to tell, and actually that is a bit of a surprise, they have literally no story to tell, that's, unless of course if you, uh, you know, pick up the codex or the docu uh, documentaries regarding them, or documents, right, stuff, stuff, stuff like that, stories to pick up, of course you have to read those through, but yet, I still think that it should have been done more, but nevertheless, unfortunately, the characters in general are not very good. And that actually kind of goes well with Lily and Adam. These three main characters, Eve, Lily and Adam are the main three characters basically. Eve is the main protagonist. 
right? All three of these characters are not necessarily or at least that interesting to me. Lily is a bit cringy in a lot of ways, but uh, maybe I can uh, understand her innocence and stuff like that. But nevertheless, I give her a pass. I think that she may be the, one of the better characters comparing to, to, to like, a whole Stellar Blade. But Eve, to me, is, like I mentioned already, very stoic, very kind of hardcore in terms of being, well, a military-esque, right? And there's some things that are kind of missing within Eve as well. Like, where's the character development? I'm not really noticing that. Maybe perhaps she becomes more open by the end of the game. But again, guys, no spoilers, do not worry. And yet, I'm just not seeing it here, at least. So that is genuinely is a bad thing, unfortunately. Okay, this can be considered as a good or even a minus. Like, you know, as a good or a bad. And there's two ways of interpreting and depending on what I'm going to mention first. First, I want to mention the puzzles. Puzzles themselves specifically. I actually like these sorts of puzzles. They're not too convoluted, they're not too complicated, and I think they're actually not too much of a grind as well. In fact, there's some very nice and thought out puzzles within this game. I really appreciate it. And it's very much uh, like, I liked it very much. It reminds me of Uncharted, in fact, a lot of the ways that they introduced the puzzles in here. And of course, there's a lot more gimmicky and arcadian arcadiness within these puzzles. But nevertheless, I think the puzzles work. But here's the part what I do not like about this sort of thing. It is the platforming. I don't think it works. Something about Eve's controls is a little bit mess. They kind of drag, they kind of... Eve is not exactly responsive in terms of the controls, but yet when you're playing the game you do feel responsive when you're combating or you're trying to fight off an enemy. But when you're going through the platform, Eve tends to just simply, on her own, making her own decisions, jump over this rail and to her doom. And it happened to me more, more times than I like to count. And really frustrated me, especially during the puzzles and moments like that. And it's irritating. But like I mentioned, puzzles themselves are good, but the platforming and how Eve handles herself in terms of the controls is not very good. And I don't know. I, initially, I thought it was just, you know, my skill maybe. But after like putting in more than 35 hours into this game and yet I'm still having these issues, it's kind of insane that I'm noticing. I have to put this in here right now. Even though I didn't mention yet about the combat in general, I want to say first of all that the soundtrack, music, wow. I absolutely love the soundtrack in Stellar Blade. It's so worth it. I ended up actually going on YouTube and listening to OST and just listening through a whole soundtrack that Stellar Blade has got. And it is it just really does work for this game very much and so if we we're going to mention the soundtrack i'm going to mention the beauty the world the graphics eve in general she's a, she's a looker like i mentioned already but the world around her also look phenomenal and this includes the enemies and variety within them especially with these you know, naitibas how grotesque they look and i definitely uh, i know the reasoning why they look like that since the director actually wanted to have a grotesque enemies and tentacles and shit because they wanted they were looking at the fishes and squids and just kind of like uh, water-based animals and things that kind of grotesque and stuff and i it really works they kind of look disgusting but when you keep playing through the game you get used to them you do and it doesn't look as gross as you would have actually anticipated or expected i like this world of variations it doesn't seem like there is a big a big amount of these enemies but it didn't feel like it was repetitive in terms of having the same enemies again and again and especially that this game introduces a sort of like open world elements of the maps right the locations that you can explore on your own foot i actually don't think i mind that now and when i say that now that i think about it as well i actually definitely want to say unfortunately it's not exactly thought out i feel that they need more work to be done in the open world elements of this game and I actually hope that the next game, the sequel, will actually just embrace the open world element of Stellar Blade. I think it will be phenomenal. The combat, let's talk about that. Combat is incredible. I love it. Especially being that there's some elements of RPG in here. And I like the way it's not too convoluted in terms of having too much of RPG-esque in this game. Because if you have too much of something, it can also mean that you'll, well, obviously you'll require more time to learn and, and ded dedicate yourself into this game so you will be able to fully utilize. This actually was a problem for me that I noticed in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. There's so much that you can do that it became overbearing. I just ended up like 
not paying attention to the most of things and just utilizing the, to the best of my abilities of what I found to be most effective and most coolest thing, I guess. In Stellar Blade, I ended up using absolutely all my abilities and different variations as well, because this is a little bit more of an, a simpler approach that they go for. I think that's actually a good thing, so this is definitely a bonus for me, or at least a plus. You know the tale that this game goes through, being as a sci-fi, and the way as well that you have few of the endings within this game, and clearly one is better than the others, and it's just so fun and enticing, and yet also makes you look forward to see what they got in store next. I really, really hope that in few years, PlayStation will continue supporting Shift Up, the developers of Stellar Blade, and continue into the uh, sequel for this game as well. You know, please give us a little bit more options in terms of the customizability as well, in terms of like, the look, right? The outfits for Eve. I actually want to have my own choosing of, for example, what kind of shoes she could wear, what kind of, uh, I, I don't know, thong. <laughs> A thong that she could wear, what kind of bra she could wear. Just go crazy since, look, Eve, she, well, she tends to reveal a lot of her, well, well, I'm not going to continue on to that. But yeah, anyway, basically, it's, it's exciting, you know, to see what they got in store in terms of the sequel for this game. Boss battles, let's touch on that as well. Boss battles are actually not bad. I don't want to say that they're brilliant, but I do want to say they're varied, and there's a lot of them, and they're a looker. Well, if you can say grotesque enemies are a looker, but yeah, in terms of being how they go about of having to, like, you know, facing off these bosses and variations of them, yeah, that's definitely is a bonus, a plus for me. Let's touch a little bit about the optimization. I played this game on the performance mode and I, or was it even balanced because anyway, basically there's no issues. This game ran perfectly for me. Now there were instances, for example, I thought, okay, does this glitch? Does this part I cannot access? Is this part like broken? Because there were a lot of moments like that in the open world elements, especially when you feel like you will be, you should be able to climb this area, but you cannot because there's some stupid invisible wall. Initially, I thought there was some little bit of glitches and stuff like that, but it's actually limited on the developer's side that I noticed that they didn't encou uh, encounter or think that a player would think of actually considering going to this direction. Again, I'm putting it in here, in, uh, but yet I just wanted to share my thoughts regarding that. I think it's actually a, a negative, in fact. I think they need to kind of open up a little bit, have less limitations. But yeah, in terms of the optimization within this game, it's fantastic. There's no issues. I felt constantly there, like 60 FPS and stuff like that. And in terms of how the game looks and how much it ran and how much also I've been encountering all these enemies and varieties of special effects within it that are within this game. Wow, this game runs very, very well. So I think this might be one last critique or a, you know, a bad thing I want to say within this game that unfortunately faces. So this game was clearly meant to be something closer to a double A standard of game until of course PlayStation made their introduction <laughs> and basically they just put a lot of funds and uh, you know manpower into this game and they made it a triple A. And so there's some elements I feel like that it's just not exactly well done, especially I'm talking about the moments of the scripts and also the voice acting. There's some elements, for example, when you're having a conversation with a person or something has happened during the gameplay, right? Not, not during the cutscene, but the, during the gameplay. And yet you're, I'm just constantly questioning my mind and thinking about, wait, did we actually had a conversation about this particular thing? Why are you bringing this up? Why is her character changes her personality as soon as I walk to this direction? While I come back, this just says nothing. It's There's a lot of these awkward moments that I'm noticing. And it usually happens that I noticed at least in AA standards of games. Now, I'm not saying it's a completely bad thing because AA can't afford doing this, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. It's just that I've noticed it and it kind of... I wanted to bring it up here anyway due to that. Well, that's all I've wanted to mention regarding of Stellar Blade. Man, I had a fantastic time. I'm definitely going to be going for 100% on trophies, so yes, including Platinum and 100%. Uh, perhaps maybe I will make a review specifically for the Platinum and 100% of Stellar Blade, but nevertheless, I genuinely, genuinely had a phenomenal time with this game, seriously. Like, it's so much fun. I really did not anticipate that this game would actually turn out this well. 
And I'm very disappointed in the fact that this game never got the collector's edition because I would have, in a heartbeat, would have ordered uh, ordered the collector's edition because I really want Eve statue. I can't find it. I can't find the damn uh, Eve statue online. But the ones I did find, they cost like three hundred. Well, not three hundred. I think there's like even more, like six hundred to thousand bucks. Oh no, no, no! Like I want to have a statue of Eve, but I don't want to overspend my money if that makes sense, right? <laughs> Uh, cheap bastard I am, aren't I? But anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. Like and subscribe. See you guys all, and have a wonderful day.